In March of this year, scientists from South Carolina and Georgia solved a nearly three decade long mystery of unexplained deaths of dozens of bald eagles with strange neurological disorders. Late in 1994 around DeGray Lake in Arkansas, people started seeing bald eagles miss their perches as they tried to land and fly into rock walls. Within just a few months, 29 animals had died. Two years after this first episode, 26 more eagles perished after displaying similar behaviors. When wildlife biologists examined the dead eagles and other affected water birds, they found extensive lesions throughout their brain and spinal cords. By 1998, at least 10 episodes of this new disease, termed avian vacular myelinopathy, had occurred throughout the southeastern U.S., but no one knew the cause. By 2005, they linked this new disease to a neurotoxin that was released by a cyanobacteria species that was living on an invasive plant that we know as hydrilla. This started a witch hunt against this invasive plant and is probably why there's been such a massive push to eradicate hydrilla today. Ducks and coots who feed on hydrilla were immediately tested and they found the same toxins affecting their brains too. The eagles were eating these birds and that is how they were being exposed. The scientists spent the next 10 years trying to get this cyanobacteria to produce this toxin in a laboratory setting, but they were not having any success. The breakthrough came when they found traces of a man-made chemical called bromide in this toxin. So they started to introduce bromide to the cyanobacteria and it immediately began producing this deadly neurotoxin. The bromide was the smoking gun that they had been searching for. It was not the hydrilla or the cyanobacteria causing this toxin. It was the bromide. Here is the bad news for Florida. You have all heard me say how Diquat has a positive charge that binds with the negative charge of decaying plants, and when it binds, it never breaks down. The name Diquat is actually short for Diquat dibromide. That's right, bromide. The FWC has been spraying Diquat for decades, and the muddy bottoms on our lakes are saturated with this chemical that can never break down. The scientists first thought it was only affecting birds. Now they confirm it is affecting fish, reptiles, and invertebrates. I have personally witnessed fish covered with lesions that were swimming around erratically and acting confused. That's the same symptoms that this new disease causes. I have interviewed duck hunters. And ever since this intense spray program has begun, they have basically killed the lake, certainly for duck hunting. I have interviewed bass fishermen. They're not spray. The spray is the main cause for the decline of everything on this chain of lakes. There's no doubt about that. You can't deny it. And last year, there was a big turtle die-off on Lake Kissimmee and the FWC blamed a virus. I wonder which one of their chemicals that we'll find out in the future caused that virus. We have also reported to you that there is hardly any frogs or snakes left on Lake Kissimmee. The scientists from South Carolina are just now testing mammals to see if they are able to contract this disease. And if they find out that they can, humans will most likely be able to. Despite this study linking Diquat to all these animal deaths, the FWC has continued to spray Diquat in our waterways. Here are the spray plans for South Florida on May 24, 2021. Diquat was used on Lake Okeechobee to treat floating plants and Azola pinnata. They used it on the Kissimmee River for floating plants, and it was used on Lake Kissimmee for floating plants in Cyprus. The following week, on May 31st, they used Diquat again on Lake Okeechobee for floating plants. The Kissimmee River was for floating plants, and again on Lake Kissimmee for floating plants in Cyprus. On Lake Toho, they used Diquat on floating plants and Cyprus. And finally, on Lake Hatchnahal, they used Diquat for Cyprus, Grandiflora, and floating plants. To continue to use Diquat after learning that it is killing bald eagles, ducks, fish, reptiles, and possibly humans is criminal. 
It took 25 years for the scientists to figure out that bromide killed these bald eagles. What do you think we're going to learn in the next 25 years about all the other chemicals that are being dumped into our lakes? With 70 to 80 percent of all the aquatic plants now gone on the lakes and their muck bottoms full of toxic chemicals, I believe that our lakes, especially Lake Kissimmee, has reached the point of no return and all we can do is sit back and watch what little is left of our wildlife suffer horrible deaths. Florida can't afford one more drop of po With 70, <clears throat> with 70 to 80 percent of all of the aquatic plants now gone on our lakes and their muck bottom, I'm sorry, I can't do this. <sighs> I believe that our lakes, especially Lake Kissimmee, has reached the point of no return. And all we can do is sit back and watch what little is left of our wildlife suffer horrible deaths. Florida can't afford one more drop of poison being sprayed into our lakes. They are all dying, and the FWC is the one that is killing them. <laughs>